My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now, I'm rebuilding the boat in Washington State, but right now I'm in South Georgia, USA. I'm here at Cross Sawmills where Steve Cross has been milling live oak into flitches for Tally Ho's framing stock. And then there's a, a 65 horse Perkins diesel right there. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. operates the south. Well I stopped here because I intended to do some filming but it's so windy outside that there's no point even trying to record audio. Anyway, I'm in uh, New Mexico somewhere I guess. I should really check where I am more often. The landscape here is just awe-inspiring, amazing. Gonna sleep in the truck tonight I think, slept in it last couple of nights. Well, I think it must be my third morning since leaving Georgia. Pretty cold here, because I think we're about eight, 9,000 feet. But I've got a double sleeping bag arrangement and uh, it's pretty cozy. But it is cold out here, so I'm gonna get in and get the heater on and get driving. So right now I'm in Idaho, taking a little detour off the highway to uh, get some scenery and a little bit of exercise. Alright, well here we are, back in Scrim, back at Tally Ho. Well it's great to be back in the workshop, it's nice to see Poncho. And yeah, I'm going to dive straight into it and start bolting together the scarf in the two pieces of the new keeled timber. Now what I've been doing is measuring where I want to put the bolts. Once this is in the boat there's going to be a lot more bolts going through. There's going to be the bolts holding the floors down through the keel timber. There's also going to be the ballast keel bolts coming up from the lead underneath. So I've got to position these bolts so that they're not going to interfere with any of the other ones or be too close to them. And I'm also having to make sure that I bring them in enough so that once I cut the shape out of the keel timber, the heads of the bolts are still going to be the right distance in from the edge of the timber. <laughs> Amazing, this big DeWalt drill, power drill, was struggling with that auger bit. Brushless Nikita cordless went through that without much problem at all. Alright, I'm at Port Townsend Foundry and uh, I'm with Pete here and uh, we're going to just make up some bolts to um, bolt together the scarf and the keel timber. We're going to do it out of uh, 3 quarter inch silicon bronze.
Cool boats. Thanks so much. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Oh, anytime. Dando vueltas a las palabras que se van. Entre tantos oídos sordos que solo escuchan la realidad. Encontré perdido en un camino que no busqué. Alright, so to bed this scarf together, uh, I'm gonna use just your regular roofing tar, roof patch you call it. Um, the reason it's so good for this sort of thing is that it stays sticky for longer than basically anything else. The wood is gonna expand and contract when it gets wet and dry. Pretty much any glue is gonna eventually get brittle and break under those conditions. So rather than trying to bond the wood together using glue, what we do is bed the joint together with something that stays sticky and soft and doesn't dry out. In that way, as the wood moves later on, it's going to maintain a good watertight seal, which is what we want. And I'm also going to put this um, roofing felt in, Irish felt. The felt is going to absorb the tar, just make sure that it doesn't all get squeezed out, because with a tight joint like this, if you do it up really tight, you risk squeezing all the bedding out until there's basically nothing in there. I'm going to start spreading this stuff. Alright, so the wood's just arrived, uh, 3,000 miles from South Georgia. We're just trying to figure out how we're gonna get it off the truck. We've got a forklift, but we haven't got a whole lot of space. The framing stock arrived yesterday and um, we got it all unloaded. It was quite a long day of unloading. Um, the stuff is really heavy and uh, we didn't have quite the right forklift for the job, but we got it done. Now I'm gonna keep on working on getting the uh, old keel out and the new keel in. But yeah, really, really happy to have the timber here. Feels like a big step. So when all this stuff arrived, I hired a guy to help me with the forklift, but now I don't really have a way to move it around. And when I get to framing, I'm gonna to have to lay out all these pieces to select the right ones for the right futtocks. A lot of these pieces can only be lifted by, I think five or six people. So what I'm hoping to do is to buy a cheap forklift that I can sell on when I'm done with the project. It has to have pneumatic tires, uh, at least a 5,000 pound lift capacity and be relatively close to the squim area on the Olympic Peninsula. But uh, if you know of anyone or you have one that you'd like to sell or lend, <laughs> then uh, just get in touch and uh, I'd be very grateful. Thanks. What's the word? He's going in below the clamp there. Yeah. All right, this is Zoli. I'm from the East Coast. I was working at a boatyard down in Port Townsend for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, 
now I'm gonna help Leo out. So. So, Zelly's not explaining himself very well. He's actually extremely experienced shipwright. Well, I worked for Gannon Benjamin since I was in middle school, really. Yeah, I kind of grew up working there. So what we've been doing here really is creating a framework inside the boat that is going to transfer the load from the props that are going to be holding the hull up and spread it around the hull. So each of these furthest outboard uprights is situated directly above the top of a prop. This piece is going to transfer that load through the horizontal cross member and this other piece coming down which is tied to the bottom of the frames. So this piece will be under tension, this piece will be under tension, but this piece will be under compression and what that's going to do is stop any deformation of the shape of the hull while it's being held up by the props and not sitting on its own keel. So what I'm doing here is just putting a lot of props under the boat basically, it's pretty simple, but um, trying to take the weight of the hull in as many places as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift the boat with the jacks so that there's clearance underneath it to take out the blocks. As I lift it I'm going to keep on knocking all the wedges on the props, I'm going to get them nice and tight so that that's taking a lot of the weight. Then I'm going to cut through the frame heels and all the floor bolts and the center line bolts that are holding the keel on and I can then lower the keel. Hopefully the boat's going to stay where it is. We've also got this block which has been bolted through the stern post and uh, I'm going to have a couple of props on either side of that. Okay, well I've now got the weight of the boat on the jacks here. Uh, all these blocks are completely loose. I'm just leaving them in there in case anything fails. See what happens. Uh, there's still, there still must be some bolts in there. All right, we've successfully separated the keel from the boat and the boat hasn't made any horrible noises. It seems to be holding up really well. Now all I've got to do is pull this keel out from underneath it, fasten it up, make the new one, pop it back in, and uh, Bob's your uncle.
All right, well that's it for now guys. So thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It really does make a huge difference and I, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And it also means I'm able to keep on making these videos. So uh, next time we're gonna be patterning up the old keel timber and using that pattern to cut the shape into the new timber and hopefully getting that timber ready to go back into the boat. So that'll be the first new piece of wood to go back into the boat. So that's really exciting. So I'll see you guys then. Cheers.